Hi there. Welcome to the Low Light Photo Group. This session was recorded on October 6th of 2022. If this is your first visit to the Low Light Photo Group, let me give you a brief intro about what the group does and whatnot and stuff like that. This was started in 2017 by me, Donovan, aka Dono Evans or Photo Dono. Basically, the group explores the genre of low light photography, where it's just creating images with a small amount of light, which can be astrophotography, light painting, long exposures with neutral density filters, and star trails, pretty much you can name it all that stuff. Basically, the group's intent is to share this knowledge and experience in creating low light images through a presentation like today and through other various workshops throughout the year. The group is mainly run by me, Photo Don, along with a generous support from Johnson Photo Imaging. Other support comes from members who volunteer their time and donations. I am also the Director of Education at Johnson Photo Imaging. <music> Zoom sessions as well as on the YouTube channel. One of the things that I love to do is I love to shoot pictures of the night sky. It's one of my more favorite things to do in the whole entire world. I, I can't think of anything more pleasing, more exciting to do than something like that. For those who haven't met me before, let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is, of course, Donovan Evans. I've been also been called Photo Down. That's why you see Photo Down are kind of label almost everywhere here. Uh, I've been currently obsessed with the Milky Way educator for over for close to 30 years now. So I've been teaching photography for quite some time. If you want to, if you like, please click and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. I often post there uh, my work and photo tips. You can find me most on social media as Photo Dono. If you can, print sales and also gratuities do help me pay the bills and put food on the table. Remember, I have a family to feed and I would rather have them eat something other than me tonight. <laughs> If you want to, you can follow the group on social media, on, at Facebook, and also on Meetup. Use the search field to type the full name of the group, and you'll see the group's banner on either site. There's no feed, of course, to join the group. I post all the Low Light Photo Group events via Meetup and announce them on the group Facebook page. I also moderate another group on Meetup called the Bradenton and Photo Group. Check it out. I post all the classes I moderate and teach, plus various field trips throughout the year. Uh, there's one thing I, I wanted to mention too. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of this particular photographer, uh, John Lowengard. Have you guys heard of this guy? No, not yet. Uh, real, he's a real interesting guy. Um, uh, I liked. I, I was looking around for quotes because I like. I've been trying to figure out quotes for some of the classes to talk about. And uh, I really, when I ran into this quote, I started looking him up. And some of his work is uh, it's stuff that you'd seen, but you may not have known he. He was the one that took it. He worked at Life Magazine, you know, yeah, from like from like it says in there, sixty one to, you know, and was the editor to, from seventy three to eighty one. Wow. And, uh, yeah, and so this is one of his iconic photos. You're I, exactly I, right. We've seen that before. Yeah. yeah, I know. I think everybody has seen this at some point or another, especially if you're in the sixties or fans of the Beatles and whatnot. And that's one of his photos right there. And uh, he had a an eclectic uh, collection of stuff but you know when he was saying you know you know something about about you know it's not all about the light in there it's true you got to get take away some of the light to make some of the images you know and that's basically i can see that in what he was doing so i thought he was really an interesting uh, uh character and and he certainly has a an interesting eye when he was doing all this stuff when he was documenting i started looking this stuff up because i did that uh one day Tampa Bay photo walk uh, up and um, you know where they where they it was a community wide event for the Marine Arts Center up in St Pete where okay. they, they a bunch of photographers went out and shot up to about five hundred pictures on one day only all around the Tampa Bay area and uh, so I thought this was kind of apropos street photography is not necessarily my thing but again an interesting uh, character to say the least. Mm -hmm. Uh, a couple of things, if you guys haven't seen it already, because I know I've been posting like crazy since I've got power back. 
uh, on November 27th, and this is still down a ways, I'm going to try to, again, try to shoot the sunrise over the skyway. Oh, that'd be good. It's a bit, of a, a bit of a tricky one because usually the park doesn't open up until 7. Again, I haven't been there since the hurricane hit, so I'm going to try to visit there if I can before then. But the plan is to get there by uh, before the park opens and then scoot down there. Uh, the sun rises at 7 a.m., but I usually get by there at 7.10 set up. So that means you really have to have all your gear ready just to plop onto the, your tripod or if you're going to be shooting with a tripod on there, so you're ready to rock and roll at that point. All right. Anything else uh, that's coming up that anybody wants to bring up or anything like that? Any events that you guys thought might be interesting? No? All right. Okay. No. Okay, great. Uh, just a couple of things. Something I thought that was kind of interesting that came, uh, that the store actually came in across that they are, uh, at the, uh, uh, they went to this thing that's called the pro event where a bunch of the vendors, you know, hawk their wares at the stores and say, hey, check this stuff out. This I hadn't seen before. I thought this was really, really cool. Oops, wait, hang on a second. There's somebody trying to get in. If I hit it, I don't know if I can do it. Come here. There we go. Hopefully they get in. So uh, where was I? I'm sorry. Let's see. Hang on one second. There we go. So the um, so these H and Y they're called Revo rings, and what they are is they basically it, you can get them up to about eighty two millimeters. Uh, so it'll fit one filter, pretty much fits them all, kind of thing. They actually have four different sizes. The store is carrying these four. And uh, it's going to be kind of interesting. I was playing with it earlier today, and I'm really tickled pink because it works as a non as a as a ten stop neutral density filter, but it also works as a circular polarizer as well too. And I thought that was just pretty uh, pretty darn spiffy. And is so that the, magnetic? I'm sorry. Is it magnetic? No, it's uh, it's basically it's a spring system on there. So you turn okay. the spring and it, and it goes over the over where you with the filter is and you just put it on there. And basically it's like they're doing their little video here. That's all you're doing. They do have a magnetic uh, 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 version of it, but oh, this one's more wet with because it just springs in and attaches like that. And it goes anywhere. Like so the one I was playing with, this goes from 67, 82. But I'm going to probably get the 58 to 77 because that fits most of my lenses. So I really like the fact that I can do a circular and a neutral density when it comes to landscape all in one go. But uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to on my uh, trip this when I go on my trip next week to see how that goes and see how it works out for me. But I'm really tickled pink about that. I thought that was really spiffy. So how they do. Oh, so it's not a graduate neutral density. It's just a so total neutral density. No, no, it's a it's a it's a variable neutral density, not graduated variable. Right. Well, it variable. Goes one and a half to ten stops. Huh. I'd like to know more about that because I got the magnetic one from Case, um, right. but their um, um, graduated was done for sunset, but it's dead center. You know, um, right. so that's not where you want it. But I like the magnetic. Everything else I like about the system, I like. Right. But this looks pretty easy. Yeah, like I said, I I, I have a, a forty to one fifty uh, lens, which is that's the largest aperture uh, opening. I've uh, sixty seven millimeters, the largest opening I've got right now. Mm -hmm. I've got an old eighty two millimeter polarizer and an eighty two circular that uh, a neutral de variable neutral density that I picked up because when I had gear that was that size, that's what I was using. And I just got step up rings. Here I'm shooting most of my uh, lenses are fifty eight to up to, uh, the, I think the largest opening on, on Olympus is 72 or 77. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm going to be getting for myself because that way I can one filter to rule them all. I don't have to worry about step up rings, step down rings, the yada, thing, yada, yada, yada. The thing to, to find out. Like yeah, the thing to find out, Dono, is that um, if you're going, if it's going to cut off any of your edges, you know, even though it, they say it should not, but some of them, right. do, some of them do, and you're not really getting the full, you know, real estate on your your screen. No, because at least from what I can tell, at least on the one that we got here at the store, it's so big it shouldn't be doing that. Now, if you're an ultra ultra wide, you're going to have to go back to like you know the uh, 
especially like if you have the 12 to 24s or the 14 to 24s, you know, those really ultra wide lenses, you're going to still need the old adapter plus the squares that you can slide in, you know, the 100 millimeters. Right. To well, I'm, the I'm using my, uh, sometimes a 16 to 35. Um, right. And so I, ha but I can't, I can't really get the whole real estate at 16. I got to bring it into 24. Yeah. So if you got true ultra, ultra wide, you're probably going to pick up vignetting on this, but I would say right. up to 24 millimeters, you should be fine. But if right. it's wider than that, it's probably going to pick it up. But again, I haven't tried it on anything really ultra, ultra wide as far as that goes. Yeah. That's what I, I'm dealing with. With I, I just bought the case system to go to Cape Cod in June. Um, right. Because I like the simplicity of the magnetic and the there is no color, it didn't affect the color at all. So that's the other thing to ask about. Yeah. The color yeah, clarity. I'll, I'll, take, I'll take a look at it and play with it, see if I, what I can get. If I got an ultra wides, I can fit it on. I'll try it. Mm -hmm. let you know. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, I also, the storage has got some uh, oh, uh, stuff. Uh, so if you guys are interested in this stuff or anyone's interested, it's a really, I like to see stuff. It's really pretty cool and it's pretty straightforward. It's like any other filter holder system as far as that goes. They made some nice improvements, especially with the holders to be able to screw uh, with a little of a screw down there on the left hand side, which I think is kind of cool right there on the left, right there to make your changes really quick. Again, very smooth. I've been playing with around in the store and I really liked them a lot. This is their little video and stuff, but you can get uh, uh, the holder kit with the circular polarizer for two forty nine. Again, of course, you would need adapter rings for smaller ones, things like that. Uh, the one that I think is kind of cool the, for us specifically is this night kit, which comes with a neutral. Uh, I'm sorry, a natural light filter. Um, I've I've got. I'm going to be taking this on my trip uh, again and playing around with it. So I'm thinking that's gonna be kind of cool. But the idea is that I've seen, I've used something similar like this, uh, but from another company, I forget what it was. But uh, according to Nissi and their photographers have used it, they say they get some amazing quality between the two images. So you can see without filters and then with a right. filter. So again, most of us are aware that, you know, we got to deal with the light pollution and you got to deal with the light wavelengths of that color temperature. Now keep in mind, not everybody uses these things. You know, Peter Baumgarten, I think, has said once or twice that he doesn't use filters. He does a lot of Milky Way stuff. He just basically fixes it in post, which means he does a lot of editing to correct right. some for like right. pollution. And, and to me, it doesn't really matter. You know, whatever way works out best for you guys, it's really what matters. But I kind of like this because it might save me a little bit of effort in Florida. <laughs> if you're... If you're I use a filter now and it does turn it very blue, but I'm not sure yeah. who I, which brand I own. Um, I bought back maybe five years ago into those. So you get a much bluer photo, sometimes too blue. Yeah. My, my, uh, when, especially in Florida, cause it's such, you got that yellowish greenish cast. Yeah. I actually set the Kelvin temperature down to 32 to 3,500. Exactly. Because, and I just look at it like that. Of course I'm shooting in raw, so I can always fix the, the color temperature later so but the uh you know it's like well, i said what, got yeah. i did that with the images we took um you know before the storm they came out like you say the yellow background and then i changed them in in, in post in lightroom right all right so let's go to the next one here all right so we're just going to jump into the photo review right now. So we'll just jump into that. If no one has any anything else you want to add about this, any other gear that you guys think would be pretty cool that I should take a look at and see if we can get a review or something like that? No? Well, you may find the case system interesting. I found it interesting. It's magnetic, their filter system. Yeah, we used to carry the store. Oh, oh, then you know about it. Yeah, the Zoom line is what they used to carry. And we and we played around with it, but it never really took off. So it was kind of it was kind of like a, a hit or miss. But I, I I am hoping these Revos will work out as well as I think they will. Mm -hmm. And uh, really excited about you know the fact that I've got one thing to you know like this like you know kind of that play in Lord of the Rings one one filter the rule of all. So. Right, instead of adding them, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Let's see if I can get these things transferred over while I'm thinking about it. I'm going to go to the next one. So I'm going to start Phoenix, okay? And oh, I have no problem. 
I let you go and and uh, and I, I when I saw this I thought this was pretty cool I hope it comes out as well on the zoom as it's coming out on my screen but I really like this picture a lot is this it looks good on my screen thank you yeah I think that came out like at uh, this was you said this was at uh, Coral Cove Park uh, Coral Cove Park which is in Tequesta, Florida, which is just north of um, Jupiter by right. like, you know, maybe four miles. It's two photos that, you know, were blended. Yeah, because they got the moon in there, right? Because you had right. to shoot it over the moon. Well, I, actually, they're not even blended. I extracted the moon and put it into the shot. But they're, and they were yeah. shot with two, um, with two different lenses. Okay, that's right. I think you made it in the notes. You said the moon was shot with a 70 to 200 at f4. Right. 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 And the other yeah. one was shot with 24 to 120. Yes. Yeah. And, um, and I only wish I had brought my 300 millimeter that night, but I didn't. So, um, <laughs> but I think it's proportionally exactly uh, what the moon was. So I think it's good to look real. Right. Well, again, I like the proportions of the image, the blue and the warmth of the of the moon. Mm -hmm. I think it works out really, really well. I, I'm a very, at least anybody have any comments about the composition? Yes, I think it came out pretty good. I love the the, the softness of the water right there with all that, mm -hmm. you know, the ocean blur on there. That works out really well. I like yeah. that a lot. It kind of reminds me of an old... Uh, not fantasy, but kind of like an, el not necessary, but almost like an otherworldly type of thing. But I just like the look of it at all. It just looks uh, pretty nifty, I thought. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, um, it was it was a fun shot. I went up two nights in a row because I could, the first night, by the time I got there, it was so dark, I couldn't make my way from the parking lot to the beach. And I, and I didn't want to trip. <laughs> I don't blame you. Okay, and this one was over at Fort Hill in Cape this Cod. Is in Cape Cod, yeah, I did this in June in Cape Cod. So um, it, um, so um, you can see I used a little bit of, of light painting in the front, and um, uh, that's what it was. Um, I also this was a great place looking the other direction from Fort Hill to get the sunrise, and then this direction to get the Milky Way. And I really wasn't sure the best places to get it um, without walking. You know, four miles back and forth to in the night um, to a lighthouse. So um, it turned out there was another photography teacher teaching that night, and yeah, like three students. He said this was his number one place to go in Cape Cod. So uh, I, I made the right choice, I guess, that night. Now, did you use any filters or anything like that for this one, or just uh, no? I don't use I don't use any filters when I do the Milky. Way. Okay. Um, my own. Like eight for you. Yes. I was on the Cape. I was in, um, uh, what's the town? Oh, this is in the same town that I was in. Uh, it's just before you went, right after you go after the elbow, the next town up. Uh, well, you can go to Orleans and Easton. I was in Easton. This is, and this actually is in Easton. So I was staying in Easton. One of my collectors offered me uh, uh, a detached home, you know, in her, her property, you know, just, you know, behind the garage. And it was work, it was easy. I, you know, sunrise at 505, sunsets 830. And then uh, this, you know, maybe I went out about nine o'clock. This was taken on the bay side. Yes. Ocean. Yeah. Yeah. So you know the area, Jeff. Yeah. You go back, you go by oh, the oh, yes. <laughs> now Fort Hill, there's this old um sea captain's house and they used to have the whale's uh jaw there that they took they removed yep. but you go past his home to get to this area know exactly where it is so this is the highest point in that area place right across the street from that called whispering pines <laughs> okay and then there's i think a, a forest and a, a, a way near the parking lot by the other side of it so that's where i took it and i just set up and and it turned i think it turned out good the only maybe extra special thing is I use my clarity brush and Lightroom to bring out a little bit more of the Milky Way. Right. So how bad was the light pollution there? Was it pretty decent or is it? Uh... Um, this was pretty dark. If, if you take shut um, your lights off on your car, 
it's pitch black other than the lights from the houses uh, on the bay side. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. It was kind of like that on uh, Assateague Island on the on the on the uh, south end of it, mm. Maryland. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. The only thing that's in Assateague Island was the horses because it's in the, it's dark out there and they they clump after you and you know they clump right behind you. Oh, and sometimes you know, oh that's the, the, yeah. I would like to do that someday to get, go over there. There's a um, there's a photographer that uh, does it quite a bit once a year or once every other year where he uh, takes a group out there to do that stuff. But, of course, you can go out there on your own. Uh, there's a fam not famous, but a well-used uh, fishing shack that's on ST Island where a lot of people shoot the Milky Way. I, oh, I was one neat. of them. <laughs> a lot of famous people do that, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What I mean famous, I but a, a well-used shack, you know. Okay, that's good. So this was from our, our most recent shoot. Right. So um, I'd rather let you all speak about it, but that's, uh, I felt was my um, dreamiest shot to come come out of uh, that photo shoot for me. Yeah, Casperson's Beach, you know, like I said, it's, it's the, there's very few times you can go, it's gotta be late in the season to go out there. And the fact that the, uh, because uh, you're dealing with all that light pollution just right behind you. Yeah, you, you need to do a little, like you did there, a little bit of light painting there in the foreground to help out. But yeah. the idea is that, you know, it's just, you're really fighting the light pollution on, on there and uh, to get it. But I really like your take on this. I think that came out really, uh, really excellent. I like the nice little soft, uh, different, uh, where you were using the horizon to break it up even more so. I like that a lot. I mean, I know you got to use the horizon to do that, but it's still. Uh, well, when I photograph what you see in all my pictures, I don't I do very little cropping. It's exactly as I photographed it, maybe slightly straightening it afterwards a little bit. But th this is the full frame. Um, right. And so I composed it that way. And um, I like the um, I liked how the rocks looked earlier in the night. But this was my ideal picture from everything when I went through all of them. And as you mentioned earlier, I changed the lighting in Lightroom because it was that yucky mustard kind of yellow, and I didn't like that at all. So I think I brought it down to, I don't know if I put in my notes, I, I think I made it um, 32.5 or 3600 or something in Lightroom. Um, right, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah the, you color temp the color temperature. And I increased yeah. the pink a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You put them in your notes here. You 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 okay. increase the temperature to thirty six hundred from fifty two fifty. You increase the tint from plus thirty four from plus three, and the blacks minus twenty four. Yeah, and that's how we got with that color. But I thought that looked more real and and beautiful than than the original that yellow orange mustard color. Yeah, you know, light pollution's bad out there. Yeah, but you can still pull stuff out of it. I thought it was kind of cool. Thank now, you. Kevin, uh, Kevin uh, couldn't be here, uh, but he just he said he sent us some photos to, for, for us. To okay. look at. If you guys are interested, you can take a look at some of his stuff. I'm going to read from his notes right here. So at least uh, that way you have some idea of what he did and stuff. Um, oops, there we go. So uh, you can see right here, this was, uh, of course, the Milky Way. He shot this in Brooklyn, Maine with his Nikon D850 with a Nikkor 20 millimeter lens. Uh, he shot this at 400 ISO, 3.2 30 seconds, but he used what, what's called lights, darks, and bias, and he tracked the image too. On top of all, oh that stuff. wow, yeah. So I'm not sure where Brooklyn uh, Maine is. That's L I N is how he spelt it on here. But if you have any, anybody not know what lights, darks, and bias are, I have no idea. Is that how you bring out all that uh, more depth in it? Well, lights are basically the pictures that you shoot of the Milky Way. Darks and bias are basically, you take pictures of, of completely dark. Uh, you put your, like a lens cap over there, mm -hmm. over your picture to get all the darks. The, and what you're doing, and the bias is basically you take it out there and you get around the same temperature that you're shooting, again, in the darks and stuff, and you're covering up the lens cap generally. And then you basically shoot that as well. Uh, he said he used 30 darks and 30 bias. They basically, the darks and bias to help filter out or correct for some of the errors 
or the information that the sensor is generating instead of uh, the, what you're getting on the light. So it gets rid of noise, gets rid of some of the, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the extraneous information that the sensor is adding to the image that's not part of the image. Hmm. Uh, he tracked this for nine and a half minutes. Wow. Uh, yeah, he says conditions were difficult due to heavy condensation. I still think he did a pretty good job. The tracking spiroscope fogged up and the lens heater defogger was only intermittently working. Wow. He was trying to photograph only 128 light frames, you know, basically photograph the, uh, uh, that 120 times, but he was only able to get 19 because 90% of his light frames were uh, covered by satellites. Uh, he's blaming oh. Elon that one. <laughs> is that how you bring out more of the Milky Way by doing the same shot over and over again, putting them and then merging them like you would do if you're doing star trails? That's one of the things. The, the, if you if you do stack, because it gives you more data to work with, you know, you're just stacking each image as long as you can track the Milky Way in some form of another, whether you got a tracker or you just move the camera over every so often. Oh, right. But really, it's, it's the darks and bias that you get to help remove some of the extra, extra noise. I think right, the dark the help remove the noise and then the uh, bias is there to help correct for some of the miscellaneous color temperature that would be generated in it as well. Uh, if you, um, I can send you guys the link. There's a, a link that, uh, uh, that really goes down a, a rabbit hole for all this stuff. If you guys are interested in that type of thing, um, if I can get my thing to select stuff. Let's see, where is my, I don't know where the chat window went. Hang on one second. There it is. I'm interested in the stacking technique. Um, that sounds easier. To, I'm interested in what's easier to do. Well, stacking is not hard to do. Stacking. No, I, know, is, I mean, that's what sounds good to me, yeah. Yeah, It's not hard to do, but it's just more time and processing about that mm -hmm. stuff. He used uh, uh, something that's called Astro Pixel Processor to do all this. But there's other ones out there. There's Sequiter. And there's in stacks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, star, star stacks, excuse me, star stacks. So I should, guys, should have gotten the link in the chat thing that I sent that I found about that. Uh, this is also in Bridges Point, Maine. Again, uh, Kevin, I think does a pretty awesome job overall on this stuff. Uh, I put his, uh, his specs down here, but again, he shot with a Nikon D850, 8200, 2.8. He basically, this is just at the top of the property he was at, and it was greeted with the scenes. You walk down to the water's edge. I'm like, you, and I'm thinking, this is awesome. I go, you bastard, you know. <laughs> but uh, I think that came out really cool. Again, I like the nice balance between the moon and the water. And of course, the little bit of light that's hitting on some of those boats just gives that a little bit of extra, uh, you know, uh, an oomph that I really, really like to see and stuff. Oh, there's another person in the waiting room. Let's see how that goes. All right. And the other one, oops, hang on a second. Sorry, I'm going to go mouse back here. There are reasons not clicking to the next one. So again, this is another one he did. This was, uh, he didn't say where he shot this. I'm assuming it's up in Maine, but this was just a straight shoot, 20 second exposure. There wasn't a lot of wind blowing, so the trees are fairly sharp, he says. Uh, but yeah, that came out again. I like the uh, the the uh, the nice soft. Uh, I wouldn't quite call it spooky, but certainly very Halloween esque. I like that a lot. Now, if you guys get get startled by spiders, you're not going to like the next one. Next one, of course, is his friend the spider, <laughs> a barn spider that was making her web nightly on the porch outside their kitchen door. She was very cooperative and allow, allowed him to check his light, his lighting. <laughs> uh, he used an, uh, an 80DX speed light with a reflector bowl and a grid to help light this. Uh, so that way you get this nice blacks in the background right here, which really helps out a lot. You know, you get this really nice blacks right around her. And of course he's doing with a macro lens. So he's, I don't sure how close he is, but I'm sure he's, trying to fill her up as best as he can and not spook her in that particular thing. But I thought that was a really pretty, pretty cool thing. Yeah. And Greg Adams, uh, who's of course not, not also be here. Uh, he sent one picture as well too. 
you, you said this was on Fargo Island in Newfoundland. Oh yeah, uh, that's a says, great place. Yeah, and this is a challenge. He says the challenge was try to balance the three exceptional bright lights with the softer glows from the windows. He says he used lots and lots and lots of Lightroom adjustments. <laughs> But uh, he says he's sorry he couldn't make it, but he wanted to add some photos to the whole thing. All right, I'm going to get out of here for a second, and I'm going to go. Hopefully, I got all of Nancy's stuff now. <clears throat> and see if I can find those real quick. Let's see. Now to download. So let's go to date added. I think these are all them. Let's see if I can open them up with preview. All right, I think I got all of them. I might have missed one or two, but I think I got all of them, Nancy. If not, let me know. All right, so let's go to share screen. And let's go to this one, let's click on share. All right, Nancy, this is really cool. This was on, was this part of your Blue Ridge trip? That's the Blue Ridge trip. This is the back side of the Brenninger cabin. And um, so the shoot, the shot that follows this is the front side of it. But it's a very hilly area. That's why I included this one so you can see what it looked like in the day. Um, the middle of August is probably not the best time in the world to go. Uh, this is two August that I have been up there, one about three years ago, and it rains in the middle of August. So I contended with a lot of clouds in the sky to the point that even sunsets were like nil to none. It was fog land. Yeah. So now the next, really yeah, if you yeah. go to that next shot. Yeah. And this is the, the nightscape of that particular building. So I used some lights and basically I sat on the ground when I did this. And the Milky Way is in the upper left and the clouds were coming in another 45 minutes to an hour and I would have had a vertical Milky Way, but that just didn't happen. Yeah. Yeah, I know, I, I saw one in there that you got with the, with the Milky Way later on, so. This is the one that you that you got with a, a little bit more yeah. of it in there. Yeah. yeah. So this Milky Way is um, near uh, Linville Falls, mm -hmm. and so yeah. So you can see. I mean, I it's moisture in the air, and then you have the light pollution in the lower left. Yeah. And there's another shot that follows this. There's it's actually the aviduct. And, but I've, I've been contending with a lot of moisture in that area the whole time I was there. I mean, it, it, uh, it rained for about three days straight. It just, oh, it wow. was, oh yeah. And, and for me not to go out in the fog, I wasn't comfortable being on the road. There was that much fog. And that, oh, that's, wow. that, that's a major for me to say, don't be on the road. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's pretty cool. You're able to pull that one out of that for that particular shot. That I, I cool. drive in all the crazy weather. Roll down, keep rolling down, um, keep coming through the thumbnails. I, they, I kind of had them keep going, keep oh, going. Okay. okay, now this is the Abaduck. So this is that same area as the last photo, right. and um, so I. This is. Um, so I had to blend the two photos of the night sky. I had about three photos to get the light trails on the bottom. And that was a, a, a I don't know, maybe ISO 250, you know, it was, it was to bring the lights in and not overexpose the area. The cars were going back and forth. Um, the, the Avaduct trail is, is it has people running I mean, you're midnight and you still have people running back and forth behind you. It's the wow. most active trail I've ever shot on in my life. Of just the people going down over and into the valley. It's just there are hikers all over the place. Um, wow. Again, it's like, here I am. I'm, I'm stuck with clouds in the Milky Way. Yeah, I, I love that. The, the, first, the first thing I thought was because maybe the focus, off, but I realized that's, no, you focused on the skyline and then the, uh, the Milky Way, of course, is a bit softer on this. So this is all done in one shot, right? Right. 
Right. Yep. It is. So, it's it's not a blended shot. It's it's one shot. It's I think one Milky Way shot and three or four light trails. Right. Okay. So you so you blend in the shot. Yeah. Yeah. That because because the car part looks even though it's they're zooming by. I really like that, but that looks so much sharper than the sky. Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot of there was a lot of the, the sky. I, I didn't get it toned down enough. It just I've, I've been coming out too light on it. And it's one of those go back and reprocess. The bottom looked real nice and crisp, but the sky just didn't, the two didn't agree with one another too well. Is that because there was so much moisture that caused that to be that way? I mean, I don't know. I'm just asking. Say again. Is, is, is the sky that way because there was so much moisture in the air? It's moisture in the air. Yeah. So that caused that, um, the sense of more blurry. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot of moisture in the air. Mm. Um, we, you know, we had tunnels and, you know, it's like playing in traffic. Here's the next <laughs> one. Um, it's like running out, take a photo, run back in. Uh, the <laughs> next, I've done yeah, that before. <laughs> yeah, this is this is the fog haze that was coming out in the evening. This is maybe 8.30 going on 9 o'clock. Um, you kind of get into the, you know, the Smoky Mountain kind of. Right. Uh, this is right. Rocky Mountain, uh, North Carolina. Uh, it's on the Virginia border. Okay. All right. Cool. Again, I love the I love the the choice of colors in this particular one. I really mm -hmm. think it works out and really well. And I, the, and uh, a nice little uh, gradation between the blues to the pinks and stuff. Yes, what it looks like there. It's great. Those little blues in there are actually the tops of the mountains. Oh, I was wondering right. about that. Yeah, that's what I thought. Right. You're talking about these guys right here, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, those are the tops of the mountains. Yeah. And yeah. So that's, what is, this? is this what Route 77? Is you just approaching the Virginia border? I know it's yeah. like traveling uh, from south, going back uh, here to Rhode Island. Uh, in the evening, I've caught some beautiful sunsets. Unfortunately, too many cars behind me and couldn't really <laughs> off the road. Yeah. I think it's Route 77 that does it, and it's fantastic views up there. Cool. But I think on the Blue Ridge, they have uh, pull-offs. Okay. Yeah, they got pull-offs on all that stuff, too. Yeah, but the, oh. not, not every pull-off is, uh, is, is I, I think, every spectacular. Oh, but they, cool. I mean, they're all pretty cool, but sometimes you just want that little extra special spot, right? Is that what you were looking for, Nancy? Photographer didn't pick the pull-offs. Exactly. No, no, they didn't. <laughs> no, they, they, if, if we were in charge, we would know where, okay, the Milky Way is going to be here. So <laughs> let's put the pull-off right there. It, could, it looks over, looks the farm right there, you know. Exactly. <laughs> But you know, of course, there'd probably be more zigzaggy around there. You know, people be annoyed. <laughs> well, that's really cool. And I think there was one more. I think it was. Um, uh, I think we skipped over. Oh yeah, it was these guys. So was yeah. this something? Did you mean to send both of these? This this is the the you flip to the other one. Okay, the uh, this one is actually where it fogged in, and that's just. Okay. That's just no adjustments. Here it is. So what I did to get the other one was I took that shot and I reversed the lights and the darks on the tone curve okay. and then played around with the uh, the red, green, blue channel. And right. I probably should have darkened it down at the bottom. And so maybe a little bit too light at the bottom down where the road was, but you see the you can kind of like see where the road goes through. But the whole thing was was that tree. But I couldn't. I I, I kept waiting, hoping for a long time I'd get a sunset out of that. That didn't happen. It looks almost like infrared, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that a lot. But that was I, a know, I, creative thing. I was like trying to do this back and forth real quick because I like <laughs> I like the uh, the the, uh, the color disorientation it gives me when I do that. <laughs> it's like I'm taking oh, it in yeah. acid. 
But though I love the idea of flipping those colors around like that, that works out really well. But that's what you they were running into a lot of, right? A lot of the fog. Yeah. Now yeah, that that the one that you have on the screen now is no adjustments. And that, that's okay. What I did was I listened to somebody that that talked about having glowing mushrooms. And um this was um there's this one and like there's a companion to this and it was a matter of shining a light on a mushroom so since we've had all this rain and uh it may not necessarily be you know cloudy enough to do this it was foggy and i went down into a forest area and found a mushroom and and you know put a, an adapter on so that i got macro out of a standard lens and mm. there's in the thumbnails, there's another one that shows what that looks like. That's with the extra light, I believe. And in the thumbnails, you'll see the other the other side of it, what it looks like without any light. So did you put the light directly on from the top down? Where did you uh, point the light, really? I'm, I'm sitting very close to the ground. Uh, Don, can you uh, go back to the thumbnails again? Yeah. Hang on one second. Talk about for this one or the other one? Uh, the other one. There's, there's a companion to this. Yeah. yeah. For some reason, the other one didn't open up in the in the in the program. So we got Maybe these two right. Go in. Okay. Anyhow, uh, we'll just go with this one. Anyway, what I did was I sat very low to the ground and I held a very small flashlight that's maybe three quarters of an inch in diameter for the lens. And I held the, the light behind it. And then I also shot with a light in front of it in order to illuminate the mushroom. If um, that had been, then basically you just have a grayed out mushroom. So you pick um, up the pick up the, the green and the leaves. You can see that. Uh, and is this is the, uh, the, uh, the other version of that? Yeah, this is the updated version. Okay, cool. So, well, how like, was the trip? These mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> well, how was the trip? Was besides fog and stuff, did you enjoy it? Oh, the trip was good. I I had a blast. Uh, I made it into Mount Erie, and that's uh, Mayberry RFD, and the wall murals there are really great. So I shot a bunch of uh, wall murals. Um, the weather, like I said, just wasn't cooperating. Um, you, you had to learn to shoot other things, particularly for all guys. I've got a ton of fog photos. Um, the, uh, the evenings, uh, were a challenge, uh, lots of haze in the, uh, in the mountaintops. So the, the sunsets weren't what I call spectacular. Yeah. Yeah, my uh, you know right now I'm plan still planning to go out there uh, uh, this next week. That's part of my my trip is I want to hit the Blue Ridge Parkway. So I'm hoping I I don't I haven't had a chance to look at anything else yet. See what's coming out, but it doesn't matter if there's no fall colors and I'm going. I'm just hoping that I get some something interesting when I go out there. You know, so I will have to wait and see. Oh, how they you go. you you may. I was there. Um, the third week in October, I had an Ars residency in um, the Smoky Mountains, but I came back through, I had to go through um, uh, the Blue Ridge uh, back and forth both ways. And I was, third week was almost, depending on your elevation, uh, you yeah. know, fall colors were still showing. So um, I think, was it higher up? They were, um, not, I don't really remember how, which way. Is it higher up? They lasted longer. And then uh, lower down, they 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 did not last as long, or the other way around. But anyhow, right. they, were, they were still there the third week in October, so I think you have a good chance of getting them. Oh, cool! Well, like I said, I'm going. The plans to go up. Uh, my aunt's got a cabin up in Tennessee, so we're going to oh, go great. up through uh, the Smoky Mountain Park and head over to that, and then uh, head to the head down to the uh, the north. Uh, the south entrance for the Blue Ridge Parkway down there is that's North Carolina, if I remember right. And mm -hmm. then we'll just go all the way up to uh, Virginia on that one. And uh, what I'm we're, we're hoping I'm hoping is we'll have time is to take a side trip through Shenandoah as well too. Oh, I remember but, that being beautiful. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking forward to it. Marbury Mill, my favorite place there. Um, yeah. Are you going to be able to, did you time it for the Milky Way? Well, I'm, I'm going to try to get some Milky Way shots. My The friend I'm going with, he he's not as interested in it. He likes going to historical places like battlefields and things like that. So it's kind of like a, and, and since it's his car, oh. <laughs> you know, so I'm hoping that I can, you know, knock him over the head and just take his car for a couple of hours and bring it back. You know? <laughs> yeah, I, I, um, I was able to get it. Um, one good night. I mean, you know, you it, it, you can't control the weather, but one night I was able to get it. But it was really cold, really high up there. It's like seventeen hundred feet, I think, or something. It was really cold. Yeah, yeah. Really I wasn't I wasn't prepared for the cold and the wind. Yeah, I got to bring some jackets. It's going to be a little bit chilly. Yeah, it really was. It, one time it was like minus eleven. I mean, I guess it must have been eleven. It felt like minus eleven. 11, 17, something like that. I wasn't prepared at the high elevations with the wind. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll have to wait and see how it all goes out. Right now, we, we have to get the brakes checked out on the car. So if the brakes oh, check out, the think. It matters up there. Yeah, that, 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 that'll help out in the mountains, you know. Mm -hmm. All right, so let me, uh, let's, let's wrap up this review. So these are my pictures. So these are from the, uh, again, the Casperson's one that we went out to there. And so these are some of my pictures that I shot that night. This is the one that was right just when the sun set. We're still in the uh, oh, that's the sunset there. Hour because the gold hour is basically almost gone at that particular point. And so and I'll talk more about the editing later on. But everything we but you see was there was ten. A lot of the same shots were all ten seconds, ten seconds, thirty. I didn't really have to change anything as far as that goes. And then when we got into what to the nighttime. The official nighttime this is basically how it looked at that particular point yeah. there was a little bit of storm off there to the left and i just left that in there because i thought it was kind of cool yeah i got one so, shot with that too yeah uh, this one took a little bit more work but i'll talk about the end of that in the edits but you can see there's a lot of planes flying out there uh that light the light painting there is courtesy of uh, phoenix over there <laughs> So that worked out really well in my favor. I'm glad, I'm glad it worked out. I didn't know if you're going to blame me or what. <laughs> no, no, no. That I well. thought those ro those um, rocks brought another element that I really liked into the image versus yeah. just seeing the sky, you know, in the sky. It gave it a sense of place. Yeah. Now, on this what one ISO, right here, this one, Huh? What? What ISO are you shooting at? Uh, 3,200. 3,200. Okay. Yeah, all these are all 3,200. This one is the only one I did 13 seconds. Uh, that's probably because I probably bumped it. That's the only reason probably why. But everything should have been 10 seconds, 3,200, 2.8. All 12 millimeters as far as that goes. This one was actually a little bit, I had. I actually put a couple of, um, because it's not quite, uh, you know, because I shoot with Olympus, so it's a four to three aspect ratio. This is yep. a little bit off because I added a little bit more to the top from uh, I try to do some panoramic stacking, but I I flubbed up the uh, the panoramic a bit. But I'll again. Oh, I'll talk more. that's what you're trying to do. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So this one right here was a little bit of a, a composite one right here. So uh, I I I did some star trails, and then I took uh, another one where the uh, you could see the. Um, uh, did the uh, almost the same amount of time, ten seconds again for this one. Now the, the star trails were all about there were about six uh, sixty frames of star trails that it all combined together in the camera for me and created the star trails there. And then I had the uh, Milky Way there. Then I, what I did was again in editing, I superimposed or made a composite of that. That one white line through there was a plane that was flying through the image. Like the whole line. <laughs> I got the same yeah. thing. It was really annoying. And the way that plane is lit up, the reason why it's lit up there is because at one point it was turned and flying towards us, and then it oh, turned. Oh, that's right. That's what happened. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, this one had some. Uh, I was working on it because I really wanted to see what it would look like combining the two of them on there. So I thought it worked out really well. At least for me, I'm, I'm I kind of like it. I like the nice softness of the entire thing. 
And, well, you know, really you the, yeah, that's good, Donna. I, I didn't know what to do with mine, but I like the idea of what you did about blending the two different pictures. Yeah. So let me show you some of the, uh, the edits that I did, and, and maybe this will help you out. If not, exactly. this will hopefully help out some of the YouTubers out there that might watch it, some of the people that couldn't make it to the thing. So this was basically what I call simple edit on this particular one. This one was really not that hard to edit. At least, basically, I, what I did was I threw it into um, uh, Lightroom, and uh, it's usually where I start with most of my stuff. And then I just did a few simple edits on the whole thing. Nothing too fancy. I just basically did some exposure. I hit the auto button first, and then I just uh, manipulated the sliders just a little bit more, just to get this. That was pretty much I was done, and I was like, that looks good enough right there. And I'll stop right there, and I wasn't going to do anything else to it. And it came out pretty good. But again, some quick little edits. The edits that I'm doing in this particular one is really just to basically help out with the contrast a little bit, uh, to bring out the uh, shadows a little bit more. You see, I tweaked up the exposure. You know, but I did bring down the whites and the highlights, mainly because I didn't want to blow this out too much right there. The histogram, when it was all said and done, you know, you can see it went from almost to the left a little bit more balanced out right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not really any white still in there, so that's fine. But the blacks are a little bit more down. You get this one line right there. So it worked out well. But I didn't do anything with curves or anything else. This is like just one shot, a couple of quick little edits, nothing too fancy as far as that goes. And then what I did with this particular one, just a few extra edits on this one. This is the one that I shot uh, around the, uh, so this is the picture where I shot just right as the sun set into the, uh, where we're getting into uh, the twilight slash blue hour moment. Mm -hmm. So there is what the what it looked like beforehand. And then what I did was when I threw it into uh, Lightroom and stuff like that, I just did wow. more. Edit. Now, if you look here in the original one, you look right here over to the left, I'm not sure who that was. I can't remember. I don't know. Uh, I think that was her. Uh, oh, I don't remember who it was. But he's over there in the corner right there. So I wanted to. I said, okay, well, I'll have to fix that later. So you can see in the, in the fixed one right there. Oh, yeah. So again, what I did was I started off in Lightroom. And I did a couple of, uh, you know, again, some edits right up in here in this corner right there. Oops. So when I was working on the edits right here, I just basically worked with the curves a bit. Um, I also, because again, I, didn't, well, I was trying to kind of balance it out a little bit more, get the darks and the lights a little bit more and, and tweak with that stuff. And then I didn't really do anything else down here with any sharpening or any of that stuff as far as that goes yet. I just went up there and just played around with it to get a little bit good shot with that. Then after that, I just threw this into uh, Photoshop after that. When I threw it in the Photoshop, what I usually do is I make smart, uh, uh, um, uh, smart uh, uh, objects. Objects, thank you. But what I did here first at the very beginning, of course, got rid of uh, my errant uh, companion right there, so he's gone. <laughs> I love content to wear. That's been such a useful tool for me, especially in the store. And then I basically wanted to get rid of that one spot. I think that's a buoy that's out there that lights up every so often is what it is. So that, that's always out there in Casperson's. So once I did that, I basically uh, made my smart object. I did do the uh, raw filter, went back in the raw, and I did a little bit more tweaking as far as that goes. And then in the smart filter, I don't think I did anything else. Did I do a gradient? Uh, no, I didn't do gradient, but then when I threw it in, I threw it into Topaz. And then when after I did the Topaz, I basically I did this to basically help fix some of the noise. Topaz has been a useful tool. It doesn't work for everything. Mm -hmm. You can see right there, it gives me a selection in the composite right there. And the, not the composite, but the uh, the four uh, mm -hmm. choices right there. You can see how one doesn't do as good as the other one. I, th I went with the, I think the low light updated one is what I ended with that one. And then when I threw it in there, I just basically looked. I used, again, the reason why I had the smart object there is because, I mean, the uh, smart filters there is because I wanted to, um, see if I was going to throw any kind of gradated, uh, radiations in there and stuff like that later on. But I, I didn't do that. I ended up not doing that. 
Well, you really brought up the Milky Way. That's great. Oh, never mind. I did do that. Excuse me. I thought I didn't do that, but I guess I did. That's a good thing I recorded this so I remember these things. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, so I did that. So again, because I think what I remember now, because when I looked at it closer, the uh, the noise filter didn't do so good right there on the horizon. So I wanted to kind of blend it a little bit right there because the sky was kind of weird looking with some of the uh, noise kind of taken off on it. Didn't do such a good job there. But great on the bottom. After that, I merged it. Uh, I fixed that little air right there because I didn't, that was bothering me for that little glow. I'm not sure where that was coming from. So I wanted that to go away. And then I'm throwing it into raw. I'm going to do that in a row oh, because I wanted to tweak the uh, contrast even more. Some of the highlights again, a little bit more of the curves just to give a little slight more tweaks to it. And there's where I did some of the noise reduction on that. I think they did a better job overall. And I don't remember if I did anything else on that one. Nope. Then of course it gets dumped back into uh, Lightroom as far as that goes. And once it's in Lightroom, it's pretty much all done as far as that goes, except here, what I do is I did play around a little bit more with the uh, with the gradient tool in RAW and just played with the color temperature to make it the warmer on the bottom and stuff like that. Oh, you brought up the lights, yeah. Yeah, you know, I could have done this in Photoshop too, but I think what it was is I was looking at it and I'm going, you know, I think I want to do this. So it's already in Lightroom, so I'm mm -hmm. going to go ahead and make my changes there. Then I went back to the top and I did that. And I just, again, tweaked it a little bit more. Oh, so you did time. add the gradient, yeah. Yeah, so I did add a gradient there. I remember now. You know, I did this a couple of days ago. And my brain's already into some other. <laughs> it moved on. I moved on, exactly. So on this one right here, these were uh, composite edits to get this one right here. So yeah, I that. That. this was this picture and uh, there's a lots of uh, the light going on around here. And of course, somebody's uh, flashlight was going off over there. And then on the next one that I used for the for the ground, you can see somebody had their red flashlight on there. So this one required a little bit more work <laughs> just to get to this, to this, to that, you know, so. You can see that took a little bit wow. more pokery on that stuff. Wow. And what I usually do is I throw this into, uh, uh, I did a little bit of correction on the Milky Way portion of it, just to make it a little bit uh, lighter on that one. But I make didn't it do pop. It yeah. the other one. The reason why I did that is so that way when I pull them both up, I can, when I throw it into, um, uh, when I throw them into layers, I can now uh, use a, 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 not a mask, but a layer, uh, an overlay to basically kind of fix some of that stuff so it doesn't look as uh, washed. It doesn't, because otherwise it'll be too dark behind it. So these are just some of the edits I did on that one. You know, just make some just little quick modifications here and there, just to really lighten it up a bit, but not too much. You can see up there in the histogram, I didn't go too far as far as that goes. Once that was done again, I just again opened up in Photoshop in layers and they basically came up in there. So I had the two Then basically I went to uh, uh, there and I basically, uh, oops, there, we go. there it is. So, oh yeah, convert to smart objects first. Yes, yes, I remember that now. So, and I go to this one and I'm going to do a, uh, uh, this overlay if I remember right. Yeah, that's it. Somewhere right around there. I'm looking at some of the other ones right there, but I'm pretty sure I stopped on overlay. Yeah, there we go. So I went with overlay and I thought that was pretty cool. And I thought that worked out pretty well for that. But of course, you can see there's it doesn't look like remotely like that because I still got to get rid of some stuff. So again, I did a little bit of a gradation on this to play around with it. So uh, that way you get a little bit more of a light, uh, you know, so there's a little bit more of an easier blend between the lights and the darks. And then what I did was I just, you know, like I said, just tweak the gradient just a little bit to get a little bit closer to what I wanted. Let's see. Let's go to the next one. Oops. So on this one right here, what I did was to help get rid of some of this right here, I did have to crop it a bit. So that was an easy way to fix that. So I just moved that around a bit to get rid of some of it, but I still wanted to keep most of the rocks and stuff in there. So I just did the cropping. 
but you can see right there that 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 red even after i crop it there's still that red in there on the bottom so i did the other one um, uh, on that particular I opened up the smart object there on the bottom right down there below mm -hmm. when i opened that up i then just basically just moved the color selector to just basically modify that a little bit so that way at least it gets rid of most of the red that's in the picture right there and all what i did was i just basically just modified the cyan on there so that got rid of some of the red on there so in here again i'm just basically just using a cloning tool to again kind of remove some of that stuff just kind of kind of fix it up a bit i ended up using what's called the patch tool that's this guy right here because the patch tool basically because uh, what i usually do is i leave it on content aware so when i move it over it basically uses content aware but patches that just that one little area right there so it kind of cleans it up a little bit so it blends in a little bit nicer i like that a lot and it works out pretty well for, for some things not everything but for some things once that's all done of course then i'm, I'm getting pretty much near the end i can basically uh flatten it at this point because i'm done with all that stuff and then i usually again throw it to topaz maybe do some denoising on it which of course I did, blah, 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 blah. Do, do, do. Let I pick the one I want, go to low light. I think I did a pretty good job, throw it into that. Yep, too good. that looks pretty good there. And basically save it and dump it back in the Lightroom. And at that point, you can see there, I did a couple of, I did another previous edit on this one. You can see right there. And I kind of, I'm actually, I'm kind of torn between these two edits. It's either between the, uh, the warm one or the uh, cooler one. And I kind of going towards more of the warm one. I kind of like that a little bit more than the cool one. I don't know. What do you guys think? I like the warm one. Yeah, me too. I think I think it goes I'm... better with the Milky Way. Yeah. yeah, this is what I this is what I, I did the first time go around, but the other one I did uh, again. I, I usually go back and forth over that stuff and you know, maybe do the same thing over and over again just to see what, but try different results. So this one was a photo merge. So I took these three files right here. I lightened them up a little bit to, because when I first did it, it really didn't, it couldn't find anything. It had a hard time matching them up. So when I put it into photo merge, I just did it in Photoshop again as open a panoramic for photo merge in there. Huh. And once it was in there, I just clicked the okie dokie button, but I knew what happened when I left it on auto. So I chose reposition myself. So I was going to see what I was going to do again, see if how well it does but it still did the same results, which was basically once it was all done, it's all jiggery pokery. It puts everything together and it doesn't quite line up. You know, so this part should be a lot lower down there. So it thinks this needs to be somewhere right around there. So I ended up having to do some jiggery pokery in there. <laughs> some of that stuff up. Thanks for the new up. word. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I made it managed to move some around. I had to fix up some of you look over here. I'll see what I'll be doing. I'll be changing some of the masking on here. You know, I cropped to get rid of the rest of it on there that I didn't need. And then I didn't played around with some of the masking on there. Once the masking was completed, then I got a little bit, there's still a little bit of cleanup to do here and there, but you know, for the most part, it's, it's getting to where, you know, I got, I'm, I'm a, something I can actually manage at this point. Once it's in this particular uh, style, then I converted it back to a smart object. And then I would basically was go in there and I did a, a few edits inside there under raw, just tweaking it up a little bit, you know, just seeing what I can, what it's gonna look like. Let's see this one, yeah, so back and raw here so once it's in there then i just tweaked it again and i think yeah i did a gradation on this one and let's see a little more quirk with the blacks yeah that's what i was doing blacks i did play with the uh the saturation a little bit on one of them i think right there once that was all done on that and then i went to let's see where did i go to forget blur no 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 oh yeah topaz again denoise again Played around with that and picked one that I thought worked out really well. Again, I went with uh, clear. I think that looked pretty good. Once that was all done processing, 
Mm. Yeah, so that's pretty much what it was done was with all the processing there. Then you can see right there, there's uh, th this actually, I, I lost the one that was before this one. I must have, this one had a lot more noise uh, as far as still in there because it, it went when, for some reason, somewhere along the line, all these little dots were all yellow. And so I had to go in there and actually do what's called a dust scratch filter on the whole thing. And that fixed it all up as far as that goes when I just zoomed up on it. And that's of course a 200% right down there. So that cleaned that up a little bit as far as that goes. Uh, I did a little bit of sharpening on that. And after that one, I was pretty much, I think, done after I get rid of the red. Again, using selective color to help remove the red elements in there as well. And I think I think that was pretty much it as far as that one goes. So you can see that one took a little bit of work. This was my very first one that I did on that. You can see there's a lot more noise and the patterns and stuff like that now as clean as I as I as I was hoping for. So when I went to the other one, we jumped to the other one, it's a lot nicer, cleaner, and sharper as far as that goes. If the one over here, this one was like the very, very first attempt, and I uh, knackered that one up pretty badly. So I started back on the other one, and finally I did the third one right there, which is the one I like, I think, the best out of that bunch. I love how the light now works with the rocks and stuff like that, too. And I thought that came out pretty cool. At least I like it a lot. Yeah, you know, I still got the planes in there, but I usually I like leaving the planes in there. There's another satellite slash plane that's going through there. You can see there's a little bit stuff. If I wanted to fix it, I could, but no one really notices that stuff overall. So it works out really well for me. Yeah, stuff like that. So um, that's pretty much about it as far as the edits. Anybody have questions or or any comments about what I did on the edits that we that I should have done or could have done better? I think I'd have to review it a few more times. That's great. Oh, cool. Let me get out of this. Stop sharing. I did. Yay. Look, there's me again. Hello, me. Uh, let's see where we're going on here. So uh, so nobody has anything else to add to tonight's uh, thing at all for anything else that's going on? I'm going to redo some of my pictures based on what you just shared on the editing about the photo merging. Yeah. The star trails and then the rocks. See if I can put that together with the Milky Way behind. Yeah. Well, like I said, I, I, the Olympus system uses what's called a... Uh, live composite but basically what it is it's like in lightroom or not lightroom photoshop you put a bunch of files stacked together Layered, and then yeah. where i chose overlay you just choose light for all those things and it basically it's, that's just doing it all in camera what's really nice is you get to see that happen in the camera as it's happening and you can choose which one to do as far as that goes but yeah it's a lot of fun i like doing that and sometimes i like to combine all that stuff up it looks pretty cool when it's all said and done uh, any other questions about anything else tonight? No? All right. I like it. It's quick and easy. I'm done. Uh, but yeah, uh, I really appreciate you guys taking the time tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope that uh, uh, you guys get some, uh, uh, some good tips with this particular stuff. I know some of you, like I said, are all hats and some of these things. So I'm never uh, opposed to anybody pointing out the errors of my ways, you know, because I'm just like trying to figure this stuff out along with you. Uh, I, I get the, uh, the the help of working with two graphic designers uh, with me here at the store. So if I'm ever in a quandary, I can always go poke them and say, hey, what do you think I should do with this particular one right there? So, yeah, so it's pretty much one of those things, you know. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you uh, again, Catherine and Angela. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, let's see, Nancy, yes. Thank you again, Nancy. Again, thanks, uh, Phoenix. I appreciate it. Uh, other than that, if there's nothing else, I'm going to go ahead and shut her down and let everybody get back to what they were doing. And, uh, yeah, if I see you out there at some of the meetup events, that would be awesome. If not, I uh, hope you guys get a chance to take advantage of especially the lunar eclipse that's coming up and some some, some some spectacular sunsets and hopefully i'll have some great milky way or night sky photos to share with you oh yeah from tennessee all right guys have, have a, a great, great trip thank you thank you Donna. thank you so much thank you bye thanks everybody Good night